everybody, Nate Lee here. I just got back from Kaufman camp and this topic that I'm gonna to cover today came up in class more than once. And it's some stuff you really need to know if you want to be a good bluegrass backup player, a good chopper. And this one comes with a little pretty fun story about uh, where the title of this video came about. So this was probably 2017, 2018. And Todd Phillips came on the road with us with the Becky Buller Band, filling in on bass for Daniel the Hulk Harden, who could not make it. And Todd's one of my favorite play, bass, bass players. <laughs> one of my favorite bass players. He's one of my favorite bass players. Uh, he's just one of the most legendary players of all time, and his style and his groove and his tone is just really amazing. So it was really cool to get to play with him on that. That actually later led to him playing on my album Wings of a Jetliner, which you can find all the places that music exists pretty much so we were headed to frankfurt bluegrass festival and we had to drive through louisville kentucky and we stopped at the dizzy whiz home of the whiz burger and uh ned always said ned luberecki always said that he recommended you get your whiz burger with extra whiz and i think he's probably right it's a pretty good burger there just a little hole in the wall place you probably didn't want to look in the kitchen i know i didn't um, just eyes up, straight forward, the person taking your order, and then you go sit down. So we ordered, we went and sat down, and you know, me and Dan Boner and Todd Phillips are all sitting there at a little table together in the corner, and Dan plays mandolin. He was the, the mandolin player in the Becky Buller band before I was, and then Todd played mandolin in the original David Grisman quintet. So we're talking about some major pedigree there, so much really cool stuff that he got to play on. And uh, we're talking about mandolin technique and backup and, you know, how, how we do things, how our hands move, all that kind of stuff. And at one point, Todd looked at me and he said, well, Nate, do you chuck or tap chuck? Now, some of you know what I'm talking about here. And for most of you, you probably don't. You probably have no idea what I'm talking about. What do you mean chuck or tap chuck? Well, you've heard about boom chucks, and I have a video on that that we'll put up on the screen somewhere around here. Um, how to do the boom chucks. I've got some different videos on backup stuff on my channel. So some of you have learned the boom chuck from me. It's the backbone of bluegrass rhythm and everybody needs to be able to do it. Uh, but there's this chuck or tap chuck stuff. So what does this mean? Uh, well, what Todd was asking me was when playing fast, or this could apply to any tempo, but typically we're talking about playing fast when in this question is, do you just chuck on the offbeat or chop on the offbeat like this? Or do you do some manner of a boom chuck? Now boom chuck is where you actually sound out the sound of a bass note when you boom chuck. But tap chuck, this other thing he was asking about, this is what is typically done at speed but can be done slowly as well. And the way this works is you just tap your pick, you just touch down for reference on your G string, and then you chuck. So the difference is boom chuck. Now here's just chuck. And tap chuck. So you may be able to hear that, but it's not intended to make a noise. It really is just for reference. And that's all the tap chuck sounds like. So that was the question Todd asked me. And the answer was, I tap chuck or I boom chuck. You know, I don't just chuck most of the time. And I'll go into why that is and why I think you should do it the way that I do if you want the best chance at being a good mandolin picker in jams and in bands. But before we do that, just uh, welcome back to those of you who watch a lot. Thank you so much. And if you're new here, welcome to the channel. If you like it, I hope you'll subscribe. And everybody, if you'd hit that like button, that would be really awesome because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. So now, what to do with these things? When should you chuck? When should you tap chuck? When should you boom chuck? Now, anytime I mention this online, I usually get some kind of a comment saying, oh, you should only play on the offbeat or else you're not playing bluegrass. The mandolin should only play on the offbeat. Well, if that were true, then Bill Monroe doesn't play bluegrass and didn't play bluegrass. Bill Monroe would play on downbeats. So you get a free pass. Anybody out there, if somebody at a jam session is telling you, nope, nope, you're not playing bluegrass if you play anything on the downbeat, well, you can say right back to them, nope, 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 Bill Monroe did it and I'll do it if I want to do it too. Um, you can use your crotchety old man voice like I did or whatever voice you want to. Uh, don't get into a fight, but 
you will know and you can state to your bandmates actually Bill Monroe did this and I can do this too playing on the downbeat so I have a video on the boom chuck where we discuss playing a boom note a low bass note on your G string and then chopping and elsewhere on my channel we've also talked about playing a full chord on the downbeat and then chopping which Bill Monroe did so all of this so far totally legal bluegrass but then we've got the subject of today, the chuck or tap chuck. So chuck is when you just play on the offbeat. Now, I don't usually use this, and I don't recommend it to any of my students except in very particular circumstances. And the reason is when you only chuck, you have half as many chances to get reference and to check in with the groove when you're playing. If your hand is only moving on the offbeat, then you're not staying in as good of a rhythm as you could. And if you're watching a channel on how to improve on the mandolin, then you are looking for or should be looking for every little edge you can get to play better with minimal effort. And just chucking on the offbeat typically doesn't allow people to play as good of a groove as they could. So I like to think of it as if we had had lines on the highway and we've got these little white lines or the yellow ones or whatever, and they tell you where the lane is. Well, we have them fairly regularly, so you can check in. You know where to go and where to not go. Um, as mandolin players, we would like to check in on boom and on chuck, and this is twice per measure, so that we have lots of reference points for where the timing is. We keep our hand moving in rhythm with the song, moving more. We're not playing and stopping and waiting for the next one. We're keeping a really nice, tight rhythm going. Now imagine if that highway on it instead had a line just every now and then. Well, now you've got a lot less reference point about where's your side, where's the other side, where should you be? That's kind of like if you just chuck. Much less chance for your arm to check in and stay in time. Much less chance for you to play in time. So I don't recommend you do that unless it gets very, very fast. If it's really fast, then that may be all you have time for, and that's okay. Then. Because it's going so fast, you're still getting basically the same amount of timing check-ins as you would if you were doing the boom chuck or the tap chuck at slower tempos. But I just don't recommend you make this your habit. Instead, make boom chuck your habit for slow tempos. And then as things speed up, this is where tap chuck comes in. As you speed up, there's really not going to be a lot of time for boom. And you may actually not want to hear boom at that point. You might be choosing stylistically to not put a sound out there on the downbeat, the boom beat. So instead, you can just tap your pick. We're not even plucking it. We're just touching down. That's it. So we touch down, get reference, and then wind up and chuck. And that's how it works. And if a boom comes out, we're totally fine with it. Now, when you're practicing this, if you're in the vicinity of a harmonic like I am, you may hear some ringing, a little bit of that in an actual song. Don't worry about it. If you hit a harmonic, it's not going to be a problem. But when you're practicing, if you hear a little bit of ringing and stuff, you're probably on a harmonic or your mandolin is just very resonant. So don't worry about it. If it's really bugging you, you can always move into a different chord position. So I'm in B here. Great place to practice your bluegrass chop. So in summary, here's where you want to use them. You can use only a chuck. You can only chop on the offbeat, and that's okay, but I don't recommend it because it gives you less chances to participate in and check in into the groove, and it gives your bandmates and your jam mates less information about where that groove is that you're laying down. So then I, my recommendation is that you use boom chuck and tap chuck. The faster it gets, the more you're going to need to use tap chuck because it's quick. It doesn't require very much movement. So you can check in and still get that benefit without having to make a full stroke of a single string come back. It just gives you, it allows you to stay moving a little bit quicker. When you're at this tempo, by the way, your follow through on chuck is not going to be all the way down here like we talk about. It's just going to be to here. It's going to be a very small motion when you're playing at your top speed. So boom chuck at moderate tempos as it speeds up, 
tap chuck, you can also consider tap chucking at moderate tempos as well. All right, if you have any questions, ask them down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you have questions or, or uh, requests for other videos in the future, check that out too. Make sure to subscribe to this channel, hit like for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're watching on Facebook, then follow this page and hit like there as well. All right, everybody, see you next time.